Hi, Terry Shanefeld here for UAB School of Medicine. In this video, I'd like to show you how to read a clinical research report. It's the method that I use, and certainly not the only method. But what it's done for me is help me figure out if an article will answer the clinical question that I have, and if it's methodologically sound enough that I can believe the results. So the first thing I do when I read a research paper is I look at the title. And I make sure the title actually answers the question that I have, but sometimes titles by themselves can be misleading. Second thing I do is I look at the abstract, and the main thing I look at the abstract for is if they present an objective to see if the objective answers the question that I have. If not, I'll discard the study. I look to see the general design because certain questions that you have, for example, a therapy question, are best answered by a randomized controlled trial. So I want to make sure that the question I have is answered in this study by an optimal study design. And then sometimes if there's things like the outcome measures here, I'll make sure that the outcomes match up what I'm interested in or my patients are interested in seeing if this intervention improves. And again, if it doesn't match up, I'll discard the paper. The next thing I like to look at is the introductory section, but mainly the last paragraph of the intro section, because this is where the authors will present to you the hypothesis that they're going to try to answer with their particular study. So again, I want to match up the hypothesis with my particular clinical question. And if so far, if the study meets this, then I go on to the methods. And the methods section, I'm going to critically appraise the paper against user's guides criteria for that individual type of paper. And there are separate user's guides for diagnostic test studies and therapy studies, harm studies, prognosis, screening, etc. So I'm going to read those questions um, and look in the paper to see where those questions are answered. And I'm a pretty active reader, so I like to put lots of check marks, um, make notes to myself as I read the paper, um, especially if something's missed, I try to postulate what could have been done better, what impact that miss might have um, on the study results. And so you can see as I go along, I just comment and especially put check marks when the study meets the user's guides criteria. Um, and the methods section um, really is where the main body of the paper is, where you really need to pay attention because this is where all the components of the user's guides, um, those issues that you have to make sure that the paper satisfies um, will be located. A lot of people are tempted to skip the methods section and go to the results. Uh, that's a, a real um, error being made when you read a paper. And then finally, in the statistical analysis section, I understand a lot of the statistics, but most readers won't. And really, I only look for keywords. So in this case, since this is a randomized control trial, I'm really only looking for the words intention to treat analysis. If that's done, I know the authors have done the analysis right, and I move on. And I also trust the reviewers and editors that the statistical analysis will have been done correctly. And if only and if only the method section meets all my criteria, then I read the results. And in the results, the first thing that I want to do is look at table one or the, who the patients are in this study. And since it's a randomized control trial, I'd like to make sure that the two columns, the patients are all the same. Um, and importantly, I look to see just who these people are. Is there something about them that's different than the patients I'm taking care of? Um, is there something weird about the patient population that would make the results not very generalizable? So I look at it for two things. One, just to see who these people are and if they're like my patients. And then number two, to make sure everything's equal between the two groups. Because the whole point of a study is to isolate the effect of some intervention and not have a lot of extraneous factors driving the results. Now, in this particular paper, uh, there was a slight difference in one component um, between these two groups and I made notes to myself about that and to think about that as I read the results. And results often have lots and lots of words but I like to look at tables because I think tables graphically give me the information I need um, in a much more user-friendly format than trying to read through the paragraphs. And unfortunately, a lot of times journals don't require authors to um, calculate things like numbers needed to treat and numbers needed to harm. So I'd actually do that um, at the edge of the paper so that I can make sense of the results. I also like to highlight the main results that I'm interested in and so that I pay attention to those outcomes. And finally, when I'm finished reading the results, that's about where I stop in a paper. There is a discussion section in most papers, and in this particular paper it's called a comment. And you'll see I don't highlight any of it. I don't like to read discussion 
section sections of papers because this is where the spin can occur. The authors can pretty much almost say anything they want. They can put their findings in better light than you might do as a dispassionate reader. So I really avoid discussion sections except in one instance when I find something that I didn't expect and then I go want the authors to explain it to me. And then in another reason, if there's something new and novel and I need to understand the path of physiology, I'll read the discussion section. I think the key is for you to develop a systematic approach to reading a paper and to use that approach every time you read a paper so that you won't be misled and that you'll detect any potential design flaws that are in that paper and that you'll better understand the results. I hope this video has helped you understand how to better read a clinical research report. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course webpage or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.